clean cut straight from the get go. Let's go. Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Today, we're going to be doing a video about interior lighting in Cinema 4D and Redshift. This has been a long overdue tutorial for the channel, but recently I've been experimenting with a few different techniques and I feel like I finally got to a point where I'm happy with my interior work and I want to share my workflow with you guys. So it should be a really interesting and helpful video. And before we dive into it, I want to say that this project file will be available on Gumroad. I'm going to upload it as soon as I finish recording this video. So if you don't want to listen to me waffle, just go and download that and you'll get everything you're seeing right now. You'll get this final render here with all the lighting, texturing, what have you. So yeah. Thanks for watching guys and let's dive straight in. So we're in Cinema 4D and I think before we dive into any lighting, I think I should just show you guys the scene setup. So let me jump out of the camera, just hide all that, tidy the, tidy the project up a bit. And you can see it's a pretty simple setup. We just have this kind of cube structure with a window in the side, uh, which I've created using a Boolean. And then we have our like window bars, which are giving us this really nice lighting we're seeing here. We then have a tree model, which is just casting some nice shadows into our scene. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've then just put a few objects inside and just designed a bit of a composition. And that is it. So it's a pretty simple setup, but the magic is in the lighting. So let's just kind of go through this from scratch. I'm going to delete everything and we'll get to work. So this is the scene without any lighting. So let's start off. So obviously there's all different types of methods you can use for creating these interior lights, but really it comes down to either using a redshift sun and sky or a dome light. In today's video, we're going to be using a redshift sun and sky tag just so that everyone can follow along and you don't need to use any specific HDRIs. So we're going to go to the redshift menu, go to objects and go to the redshift sun and sky rig. And let's just play our render view. We should now have some lighting in our scene. Give that a second to boot up. And at the moment, we're not seeing anything. All we're seeing is our lovely little glowing orbs. So let's start to kind of play with this redshift sun and sky and start to bring some light into our scene. So I've just kind of moved this in the middle just so I can actually see uh, the handles. And I'm gonna press R for the rotate tool, or you can go here and let's start to rotate this around until we get the result we're looking for. So obviously we want the light to kind of shine through the window, which we're getting here. And um, we can see those tree shadows coming through, which is just lovely. Uh, we're gonna try and match this up with what we had at the beginning uh, and see how close we can get. So we're just kind of changing the rotation for this. Uh, I think something like this works pretty well. Let's just move this over a little bit. And I think this was kind of close to, to where we were at. I am just going to dial in some values, which I saved. Uh, but I think we're pretty much bang on the money. Um, let's just try this. And uh, Actually, I think I kind of preferred it like, like that. So there we go. Okay, cool. So just like that, we've already got some really interesting lighting. The, the tree is helping to add this really nice shadowing here. You can see if I just disable this. Um, it really does just help to kind of break it up and make the scene feel a bit fuller, makes it kind of like build out that environment. So, you know, you have to kind of take these things into consideration, just like add some outside elements to your scene just to kind of help cast some additional shadows. So just like that, we've got a really good starting point, but obviously we're nowhere near the final result. It's very dark at the moment. There's not much warmth and it just feels like it's lacking something. So let's start to dial in a few values, which I use to just help to elevate the lighting and take it to the next level. So we're gonna dive into our redshift sky and sun settings. And one of the first things I like to do is play with the red and blue shift. So this is actually going to obviously kind of change the coolness and the warmth of the image. And I like to just dial in a little bit of warmth. So in this case, I'm gonna go for something like 0.2. And you can see that's already helped to make it feel a lot cozier. It gives you much more of like a sunset or sunrise kind of vibe. And yeah, like I said, just kind of helps to add a bit more uh, of a mood to the piece. So that's it by default, just a little bit of warmth and that helps to completely change it. So already we've started to dial in a little bit more detail, but there's obviously more we can do to this. Um, you have your turbidity setting here, which if we cranked all the way up is actually going to kind of make it much more diffused and take some of those highlights out. So we don't really want to do that, but I will 
maybe set it to like 2.5 just to kind of help even it out ever so slightly. It's just a very tiny thing there. So the main thing we want to do to this scene right now is brighten it up. You can see it's very dark in the areas that aren't illuminated by the, the sun. So we kind of want to brighten this up and just make it feel a bit lighter and a bit more like a daylight kind of feel. So there's a few approaches to this. What I was doing previously is I was going to our Redshift Sun, going to Details, Contribution, and then bumping up the global illumination. Now you can see if I just increase this to something like three, it's going to already boost up those dark areas and that's because it's giving you more GI bounces. So essentially the light is bouncing around more in your scene and having to lift those darker areas. The problem with this is that it does take quite a while for cinema to calculate these additional GI bounces. So if you crank this up to something like six, it is going to give you a much lighter feel, but it's going to take ages for cinema to render it. So you're going to have to pump in some crazy samples to get a clean result. And it's just going to take ages to render. So it isn't really a efficient method of kind of brightening your scene. So what I'm actually going to do is bump this down to one and just leave the redshift sky and sun as it is. What we're actually going to do is use another redshift light, which is going to help to give us those additional GI bounces without the crazy render time. So what we're going to do is go up to the redshift menu, go to lights, and we're going to grab something called a portal light. Now I'm just going to pause the render and maybe let's take a screenshot of what it looks like currently. I'm going to dive out of the camera and we're going to get this portal light, which just looks like an area light. And what we want to do to make this work is just position it in the main source where your lighting is coming from. So in this case, it's going to be in this window area here. So how this portal light works is that it gives you additional GI bounces without cinema actually having to calculate them. I can't tell you the ins and outs of how that works. I'm sure it's in the Redshift documentation, but all I know is that it basically replicates what we were doing in the Redshift Sun, but it won't take as long to render and it won't be anywhere near as noisy. So what we're going to do is just position this near the window near where our main light source is coming from and we want it to fill the whole area so let's just scale this up by pressing T on the keyboard and just moving this into place uh, let's just scale this up scale it up and down and just make sure it really fills that gap there okay cool that looks pretty good and uh, we want to get it as close as we can without it intersecting inside our scene so somewhere around there looks pretty good Again, just making sure it's fit in the space. It looks like it is, so that's all good. So if we go back to our camera and press play, let's have a look at the result we're getting. And nothing's changed, which is strange. You'd think we'd have more light in our scene. Well, there's a couple things we need to do. First of all, we need to actually add some exposure to our portal light. So at the moment, the exposure is set to zero, so it's not giving us any additional GI bounces. So let's try to set this to one. Again, nothing is happening. So let's dive out of our camera. And what we need to do is actually just rotate this round and make sure our portal light is facing inwards. And you can see already we're starting to get some more light come in. If I just disable this and enable it, you can see some light is already kind of trickling into this area here. If I take a screenshot, you can see the before and after. So now it's just a case of cranking this portal light up, let's say to an exposure of something like three. And now we have a much lighter feel and it's not gonna take ages to render. And actually it's giving us a better result than when we bumped up the GI in the Redshift Sun. So we can use this to pump in more light. So we could pump this up as much as we want. If we went for something like six, you can see we're getting a much lighter feel. This feels like a nice daylight feel with a bit of a sun coming in and we've completely changed the mood of the image. But what I'm actually gonna do is leave the exposure at three and use a different technique to boost the light of the scene and just add those final touches. So what we're gonna do for this is just go back into our camera and we're actually gonna use the Redshift post effects. Now I already have them set up, so I'm just gonna open my settings and when I enable this photographic exposure, you're gonna see kind of the difference it makes. So when I enable this, this should boost our scene to how we want it. So let's enable this and you can see already that's lifted it. Now I have tweaked these settings. So I'm actually going to set everything back to the default and then be able to kind of show you guys what I did. So even with the default settings, you know, it's helping to really kind of boost that lighting. 
And the reason for this is because it starts to use f-stops and ISOs and shutter time ratios to affect the lighting. So if you have any kind of knowledge of cameras or photography, you'll know that the f-stop affects how much light is let into the sensor of the camera. So if I adjust this f-stop, you'll see I can lighten that scene all the way up until it's completely blown out. Or on the other hand, I can darken this down. So this is a really powerful slider and we can use this to just inject a little bit more light into our scene. So I'm gonna go for something like 6.8, which is the setting I already kind of predetermined. And you can see if I just disable this and enable this, we're getting a much lighter result. By default, it's actually gonna desaturate your image. So if I just disable that, we'll get that original warmth back, but I do actually tend to keep this enabled and then I can always bring in more saturation in post-production if I wanted to. Or actually I could take the saturation slider and just boost this back up. So this way you get the color, but it's also kind of like muting it at the same time. So it's just not overly saturated. Um, and you can just strike a nice balance using this. I'm actually gonna leave that at one, if I can uh, get it. Oh, there we go. And the next thing I like to play with is this allowed overexposure. So this is gonna clamp any highlights which are blown out. And by default, I think it's actually set to 0.2, so my bad. But you can see as I slide this, it's actually gonna clamp those really bright areas we're seeing here. And you can just use this to kind of level out your image and just stop anything from getting uh, overexposed. So I'm gonna set this to 0.1, which I think works well for us. Um, and you can see now we're getting much closer to that final result. So it's now it's just a matter of a few extra redshift post effects to really take this to the next level. And this involves color controls. So again, I'm just using this to boost the exposure just a little bit more. So I had this set to one, and then I just pumped in a little bit of contrast, literally just 0.1, and that's gonna help to really kind of just crunch those values a little bit and just brighten it a little bit more. I then added a bloom and a streak, and that's just helping to add some glow to these orbs, but also from kind of like the main light coming from the right-hand side. Just helps to make it feel a bit hazier and a bit softer, um, just really kind of adds that final touch. So here are some of the settings for those. Um, you can play with these until you get the result you want, but you know, it's pretty straightforward. And then finally, if you wanted to just go the extra mile, you could add a color correction to this. Now the scene's pretty bright, so most of these may kind of overexpose your image, in which case you may have to drop the f-stop down or drop down the kind of intensity of your portal light but you could scroll through this and see if there's some nice ones in here. These are quite cool. It does take some of the warmth out, but just helps to add another level of kind of finish to your renders. So hopefully I explained everything properly. I think this is a really powerful technique and workflow for lighting your interior scenes, and it's gonna be the workflow I use going forward, unless I stumble across anything else, in which case I will let you guys know. But as I said earlier in the video, you can download the Gumroad file for this project. So if you did want to kind of dive in and just, you know, look at a few certain things, even if you wanted to look at the texturing or the lighting a bit more, um, then you can do that. The link will be in the description as always. Uh, but thanks for watching. Hopefully it was a really helpful and useful video. I really enjoyed working on this piece and I learned a lot from making it as well. So definitely expect some more of these interior shots in the future as I kind of try out different compositions and different layouts. So thanks for watching guys. If you did enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. I really do appreciate all of the support and the comments. I read them all and you know, it really does mean a lot to me. And then finally hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Okay, that's everything for me. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, peace.